and they forget that the actual product that the user is coming there for is the content. And if that isn't amazing, you know, there's so much content out there in the world that yours will get lost. Welcome to the B2B Digitize podcast, where leaders of B2B technology startups and scale-ups learn how to use digital transformation to differentiate, educate, build trust, improve competitive positioning, close sales faster without compromise, and scale revenue growth. Now here's your host, Joshua Feinberg from SP Home Run. Hi, I'm Joshua Feinberg from the B2B Digitized podcast, and I have a very special guest here with me today. I'm welcoming Eric Peters. Eric is a senior growth product manager at HubSpot, primarily working on HubSpot Academy and the newly to be launched HubSpot Network. Eric, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks so much for having me. Good to be here. Likewise. So I think the first place that would be super helpful to start is from the perspective of someone that may have a little bit of familiarity with HubSpot, but doesn't know much about HubSpot Academy. Can you walk us through how you got to your current role, how your team is structured and, and what you do primarily at HubSpot? Sure, sure. So the history of HubSpot Academy is pretty interesting at HubSpot. Uh, as you probably know, if you're familiar with HubSpot, uh, inbound marketing and the inbound methodology is uh, kind of a core tenet of how HubSpot markets itself, how HubSpot teaches its users how to market themselves, uh, et cetera. And early on in the, the early days of HubSpot, uh, folks who were there before me decided to make a inbound certification that taught people how to do inbound marketing uh, and uh, kind of assessed how well they learned that skill and, and learned that information. Um, that course and that certification was actually initially only for customers. And, you know, in the spirit of inbound, uh, they kind of let, you know, it go open to the world. So it became kind of this free and open to all certification. And it wasn't necessarily the best course on SEO or the best course on content marketing, right? Like HubSpot's content teams are incredible and they do try to create like the best content on the internet. But at the time that course, what was really special about it was that it connected the dots between otherwise kind of disparate marketing tactics. Like it really allowed you to see, okay, here's how your email marketing strategy connects to your content marketing strategy and that connects to your SEO strategy. And so from there, we started to, you know, kind of build this demand for HubSpot Academy content, which became this online learning self-service uh, enablement platform really for HubSpot. Uh, it initially was there for customers and partners, as I said, to teach them how to sell and service HubSpot or teach them how to use HubSpot. Uh, but we started to see more and more value as an acquisition channel and as a demand generation function for HubSpot Academy, because at the same time, this whole wave of online course providers was growing, like Coursera was reaching these astronomical size viewership. And uh, so we kind of split the content teams up into acquisition content or uh, just general, like how to do content marketing, how to do email marketing, doesn't necessarily teach you how to do it in HubSpot, but just teaches you how to do it really well. And then we had obviously software training and partner enablement training and things like that. Um, and so the platform kind of grew from there and rather than having one specific mission for HubSpot, it just became like this online learning platform that teams at HubSpot could use to reach their missions. So then, you know, we started really focusing on how developers build and extend HubSpot. And so all this developer content sort of came out in the woodwork there. And we started focusing on how we, you know, teach how we bring HubSpot into like university settings and enable professors at universities to teach HubSpot. And so all this new programming and functionality came for, to support that initiative. So the HubSpot Academy kind of platform is really just an online course provider that's really built into HubSpot. And what's really unique about it is that it has HubSpot attached to it. If you kind of flip the script and say, well, HubSpot Academy is this online course provider out in the world. It's the only online course provider that has a whole mid-market SMB software platform attached to it where you can go play around and use the free tools and try you know, what you're learning and apply what you're learning in a you know, relatively safe kind of sandbox environment. So that's kind of the story of how HubSpot Academy grew up to be what it is today. And yeah, it still supports a lot of different functions for HubSpot. Yeah, it's amazing to see in the roughly 10 years or so since it morphed from 
uh, inbound marketing university and content camp and all the different courses originally for end users and customers and partners, how broad the catalog has grown. And that alone must have presented some great opportunities and some great challenges around scaling. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the biggest challenge we have today is that that library and that catalog keeps growing. And so enabling users to find the right content for them is kind of my team's core mission, right? Like when they first sign up, what's the right content that someone who's in marketing at a company that this, this size and has this challenge should take first? Um, and that's, that's a pretty difficult puzzle to solve. Yeah, I imagine because most of my role over the last decade or so is working with startups, scale-ups, small businesses, companies where they're either outsourcing or a very, very small marketing team, a, a couple dozen employees. And it's so different than the context of someone that's working in enterprise marketing where they're just dedicated to search or just dedicated to uh, paid or just dedicated to social or content or something like that. Absolutely. So the first big question I wanted to get your take on is for someone that is brand new to growth marketing and brand new to product-led growth uh, to PLG, what advice would you offer them to start regardless of whether they're working in the context of customer education or just more broadly for, for a SaaS or, or a tech company? Um, so I think when I first started getting into product-led growth and growth marketing, the the most important thing I did was start talking to customers and really get, you know, good qualitative research. You know, I think in growth, particularly when you go into growth or product led growth, you tend to have really good analytic skills and you lean on those skills and you build dashboards and you, you know, model out, you know, behaviors and, and the metric side of the puzzle tends to be like the natural fit for a growth marketer. But the qualitative research side, where you're talking to people and you're doing more like anthropological research and asking them, you know, why did you do this? Or, you know, there's this, this concept of the five whys. Why did you sign up for HubSpot Academy? Okay, to get a, uh, you know, to learn the tool better. Why do you want to learn the tool better? To get, you know, better in my job. Why do you want to get better in your job? To get a raise. Why do you want to get a raise? To take my family on vacation. Ah, okay, that's why you wanted to take sign up for HubSpot Academy, because you want to take your family on vacation. When you get into the deep kind of understandings of user motivations, that's an incredibly valuable uh, perspective to gain and uh, enables all of the rest of those skills that you have as a growth marketer or product like growth professional to really come, come into fruition. It's super interesting too to dig into the motivations. And when I think about like the golden circle and starting with why and really getting deep into essentially like personas, which I first learned about personas from the predecessor to Academy back from some of the earliest HubSpot marketing hires and this whole idea of putting yourself in the user shoes and their perspective. And I guess that was a huge part of figuring out how to scale the, the courses, right? Yeah. And it's so important because, you know, you can look at your, your dashboards and your reports and see here's what 10,000 people did this week, or here's what a thousand people did this week. But to go and talk to, Betty, who, you know, whose boss told her to take this course in HubSpot Academy because they want to evaluate HubSpot. And that's that's a totally different type of information. And yes, it's a sample size of one, but it's still an incredibly like rich experience worth informing, you know, product decisions and, and experience decisions later on. In my life, prior to learning about inbound marketing, I was doing probably what you'd consider early generation digital and internet marketing and online marketing in the early 2000s. And around that time, a lot of software companies were pre-SaaS and struggled a lot with fragmentation within such the broad category of small businesses. Has that been something that's challenged you as well uh, with scaling the growth of HubSpot Academy? Uh yeah, I, I would. I mean, especially with the diversity of the catalog and how many different kind of jobs to be done, HubSpot Academy has now. Kind of splitting out these different personas, thinking about you know what is the main job to be done for each of these types of people. That's really become like the name of the game for us, and and doing it in a programmatic way that shows the right content to the right person at the right time. Um, attributing someone's experience in HubSpot Academy to you know, downstream impact, right? Like did someone who took the email marketing certification in HubSpot Academy send better emails in HubSpot? That is like one of the, the biggest challenges and, and the kind of hardest causation correlation puzzle for us to solve. Um, 
we have a pretty good idea of, you know, well, good users self-educate, not necessarily self-educators are good users, but uh, those are those are the kind of puzzles that my team at HubSpot thinks about all, all the time and, and tries to solve. It's really fascinating to hear that perspective as well, because from leading a HubSpot user group, a hug for four years, that was one thing that we never really were able to get a great handle on either, aside from just surveys of people that attended the meetings. That's something that the HubSpot partner ecosystem has struggled with also connecting the dots on all of this. So I'm really curious to hear from the perspective of a product-led growth expert, how you've been able to use features within the platform to be able to know that you're on the right track with moving the needle on some of these metrics aside from just like a basic NPS survey. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, largely a matter of enabling the content creator to, to learn what key metrics they want their content to improve. So the person who created that email marketing certification, give them the, me- the ability to measure their cohort of learners and how they perform in the software platform compared to other learners. Um, because, you know, from my perspective of looking at all 500 courses and lessons in HubSpot Academy, like I simply cannot do that. So I, I need to enable the content creator to take it upon themselves to see that they're having the impact in the customer experience that they're looking for. Yeah, just the scale and the volume is just have to be enormous. I remember a time back several years ago when most of the courses had practicums yeah. and the professors, the content creators were literally grading the work. You know, somebody said, go build a landing page and make it build these best practices. And they'd have to go and manually review that. And you could see that just that wasn't going to scale. <laughs> yeah, it's, there's been a lot of scaling. I mean, particularly across different languages, uh, different, you know, internationally, that it's been a big challenge to, to scale up Academy and enable it to be a self-service platform. Yeah, I've noticed just a ton of growth in the last two or three years around that also in multilingual HubSpot Academy courses, multilingual HubSpot Academy professors. Has that presented unique challenges in scaling the catalog and the engine? Oh, it's incredibly challenging. Um, I mean, for instance, so take the way we teach inbound marketing is like largely how to do digital marketing in North America. If we translate it to Spanish, then we're still teaching North American marketing in Spanish. So do they, does the user expect uh, you know, digital marketing in Mexico or digital marketing in these other parts of the world that speak Spanish, or do they just expect North American marketing in Spanish? Do we, you know, so that's like how the gradations of localization, is it fully localized? Do we teach, you know, this is how you do digital marketing in Japan, or do we teach, or, or is it just translation? And it's, this is how we do digital marketing in America, but taught in Japanese. And so just knowing that that spectrum exists opens up this enormous uh, you know, challenge of, of saying, what, how far do we go, right? Is, can we teach how to do digital marketing in Japan in, in Japanese and still you know, bring the HubSpot software platform into that course and enable those users in Japan to do Japanese digital marketing? Like I think the, the, the subject matter offers the biggest complexity. Um, in the whole localization puzzle, for sure. What advice would you offer to someone that's fairly far along in the journey? Maybe they have product-led growth is still relatively new, but just doing uh, growth marketing and, and product management for a SaaS company, probably five, 10 years into their career, maybe they've gone through an especially challenging time over the last six or 12 months and they're looking to reset. Um, what did peer advice would you offer to uh, someone in that role to help them get back on track? I would say, you know, go back to the fundamentals. Think about the um, the customer of your customer, particularly in B2B. And this is something Dharmesh Shah, our co-founder, uh, always says is that, you know, if you solve for the customer of your customer, you're never going to do your customer wrong. Well. And so in HubSpot Academy, if I think about, you know, who is the end, you, end customer of HubSpot Academy, it might be, you know, so for instance, if we have a student in HubSpot Academy, are they the actual customer or is the person who's going to hire that student the actual customer? Or is the end user of that customer the actual customer? Like, how do I think through the chain of value to make sure that the person who is experiencing this digital experience that I've built gets the value out of it that they should get out of it? So I think going back to the fundamentals and solving for the customer is key. I think it's so easy to want to jump on the new trend, the new channel, right? Like we saw this whole clubhouse, like, enormous, you know, 
the trend happened. And it's kind of like, you know, petered out a little bit. And the same thing happened with Snapchat when Snapchat first came out. Same things I'm sure happening with TikTok. Um, but I think if I were to do a reset in growth marketing, I would say like, go back to the fundamentals, know your customer really, really, really well. Like be able to talk to them like they're a friend. Know, you know, the create digital experiences that are going to exceed their expectations so that they're willing to tell their friends about it. So they feel like they found something special um, and they feel like they're an insider who wants to tell people about this great book that they just found. Uh, those fundamentals, I think, go a long way. And I think people who are you know, five years, 10 years in tend to lose sight of them. I'm just keeping peeling back the layers until you say, okay, I think I'm at the source right now, but oh, let me ask and double check. Nope, there's actually another layer deeper here to get closer to the actual user. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, there's, and there's something I think that happens at particularly at bigger companies where you tend to have more budget, more people working on things. Um, you know, having come from the startup world before I joined HubSpot, when there's budget constraints and people constraints, and it's just you and you have to figure out the most exponential tactic that you can find. And you can't try out six different things when, you know, with a team, it's just you. That the creativity that, that those constraints um, enable and force go a long way. And so I also you know, tend to try to challenge people to say like, what could, what would we do if we were at a startup? And this is the one play that we needed to like save our cash flow and just like completely save us from going bankrupt. Uh, and those types of brainstorms tend to be really productive. Has that shaped your thinking and overall approach to the product roadmap when you look at over the past three or five years, like HubSpot for startups, uh, the starter edition of the virus hubs, has that fundamentally shaped how you've approached some of the academy roadmap, the academy course catalog as well? Certainly. Well, it's, it's definitely opened up the audience, right? So whereas HubSpot was this kind of 200 to 2000 person segment, it, you know, when we open it up to the one to 10 group uh, in that starter segment, it's certainly made for a whole new world of content in HubSpot Academy, where we were not just like teaching people a new way of doing digital marketing where they might have already done digital marketing. Now we were like teaching them the fundamentals of digital marketing and what search engine optimization even means uh, or, you know, what clicking on an ad does uh, behind the scenes for, for a marketer. So I would say the discovery patterns of content of our, of our users in HubSpot Academy changed dramatically because it, it then became about putting things in their language and say, and explaining to them, okay, you want to get more people to find your business? Is that what you're after? It's not, do you want to learn demand generation and lead generation? It's, you know, are you looking for a replacement for the Excel spreadsheet you've been using to track all of your employees rather than a new CRM system that can, you know, manage your contacts? So how does the process work taking us a little bit behind the curtain on when you discover a need versus how far you're planning out a course versus how much the creator, how much the academy professor is planning out what the curriculum is going to look like. So the content creators have a very sophisticated process at this point, and they have a lot of constraints based on, uh, you know, what they can teach that is not going to like go out of date extremely quickly. Like so many marketing topics are out of date in a year because you know we wanted to teach Snapchat when Snapchat was really hot or something. Um, but their process is, you know, starts with this backwards, uh, backwards plan. Here's what I want the, the user to learn. And then they kind of fill it out with you know experts and do a ton of research and, and talk to a lot of people about you know what are the key components. And then instructional design is, is a whole different form of content creation that they are really, really impressively good at. Um, and so our job, my team's job is to enable them to get that content into the app and in front of viewers who are particularly looking for that content uh, as easily as possible. And the content creator experience hasn't been something we've always necessarily focused on at HubSpot because it's been a relatively small group, but it's growing like incredibly fast. Now there's dozens and dozens of content creators internally at HubSpot who are all focused on different areas of the product or of the ecosystem even. Um, and then there are the you know, language variants of all of those. So um, I guess the, the short answer is that it's it's very complex and they do have to like take into account what, what trends are evolving 
uh, and they kind of grade the content based on this like evergreen score of is this going to go out of date in the next year or is this going to be a you know two to three year horizon when we need to update this next and they actually have an sla for keeping 80 percent of the content up to date at any given time which is i think probably one of the hardest things to do in customer education when you have a SaaS software platform because you have the product team updating the ui and the software constantly and you need these courses to kind of stay up to date and uh, reflect the, the latest edition of the software at any given time. Yeah, that's something as a big consumer of the Academy courses I've noticed as well over time. Originally, uh, there were some certifications that were requiring an annual certification. Then I guess at some point, probably three, four years ago, it went to the point where the product uh, based certifications based on HubSpot software were annual recertifications and the uh, product agnostic were every two years, but just in general, the whole idea of having shorter videos, so they're easier, more modular to be able to update, I imagine made a big difference in keeping, yes. keeping current. Yeah, that was, that was a, a win for content creators and a win for end users because end users tend to give us feedback that they want short clips, right? They want to be able to watch this on the bus on the way to work. Um, so great for them, but then obviously, yeah, content creators, much easier time swapping in and out videos when they're 30 seconds as opposed to 20 minutes. Do you look at a specific journey that a typical user goes through? You think about the typical, at a macro level, the inbound methodology, you have your personas and you have your journey. Is there a journey that an academy user would go through that's comparable to like awareness consideration decision or start middle and um, a kind of scenario, beginner, intermediate, advanced, any, any I mean, frameworks like that? I, I, any marketer, or I guess, product-led growth professional would, would hope that there is like some typical flow. It's, it's, there are so many flows though. Like there's so many ways into Academy, even just if you're an existing customer and you hear about Academy from your customer success manager versus you're a student and your professor assigns HubSpot Academy to you in your class. Like, those flows are vastly different. We have a t we have thousands and thousands of people signing up for HubSpot Academy every month who don't even realize that HubSpot offers software. So how do you introduce the concept of software to this cohort and then introduce HubSpot Academy to that cohort? Um, the the like, I guess the really exciting flow, or I don't know, I, I don't have any favorites, I guess, but like one that I've worked on the most is the somebody hears about HubSpot Academy because they searched content marketing and they want to learn about content marketing. They sign up for the content marketing certification. And you have a great experience taking the content marketing certification. Hopefully it impresses them. And then they come to realize that HubSpot offers software and this software can enable them to do that strategy reasonably you know, easily and all in one system. And then they go and buy HubSpot software and then they are that much more likely to be a good long retaining customer because they came in through the HubSpot Academy door and they know where to go when they need support and help later on. That flow is the flow that, you know, I have worked on for years and would love to, uh, you know, go smoothly for as many people as I possibly can, but there are so many ins and outs of that uh, experience. And like I said, the, the partner flow, the developer flow, the student flow, the customer, flow, they're all, they're all there. And so at the end of the day, what we needed to just focus on is creating an online learning platform where we've our KPIs are how many people finished the course that they started. Doesn't matter what language they took it in or what they were learning about or where they came from uh, or how big their company is or what their job title is, but did they finish it? Did they, did, did we optimize for knowledge transfer? Um, and that's how we can solve for all of these different use cases for HubSpot Academy. What do you see as the biggest mistake that people make when they're getting started with product-led growth in a customer education framework? They they tend to, especially people who want to talk to me, um, they tend to talk, think about the tech and the product and they, you know, about where to host the videos or how to, you know, what learning management system should we use or should we care about gamification and badging? And they forget that the actual product that the user is coming there for is the content. And if that isn't amazing, you know, there's so much content out there in the world that yours will get lost. So focus in on the content first and then worry about the tech and the experience after. If the content is good, they'll watch it anywhere you put it. You can throw it on YouTube, you can you know, put it on TikTok. They'll, they'll find it and value it. 
But if you focus too much on the like digital experience of, you know, like the HubSpot Academy application, I'm throwing myself under the bus because that's the part of HubSpot Academy that I work on and my team owns. But uh, that's that's so secondary to how good the actual content is. And my team wouldn't exist if there weren't thousands of people coming in to take those courses because those courses are as good as they are. Do you find there is much of a use case for people that are listening to the courses as opposed to watching it? Like, for example, one of the ways that I'm able to keep and maintain the 330, 31 certifications, whatever it is, is when I'm on the elliptical, I'm watching it on my phone. But when I'm going for a walk around the neighborhood, it's in my pocket and I'm listening to the courses. Do you get people that go back and forth between being video consumers and audio consumers? Or Yeah, certainly. And I think with the content creators, these days, when the content creators go to you know write their scripts, they they try to up, they try to make sure that you can listen to the course and still learn just as much. Some content, some topics are not going to lend themselves to that. If, if you know we're showing you how to do something in the software, you probably need to look at how look at the the video. But um, you know, from an accessibility standpoint, from a mobility standpoint, like we now have HubSpot Academy in like embedded into the HubSpot mobile app. Um, we want people to be able to watch courses on the go, watch them while they're on their, you know, elliptical and, and do all that stuff. So part of that is content formats and, and making sure the script says everything that the user needs to hear in addition to showing what they need to see. But also it's you know putting that content in a format that's accessible, whether you're on a train, whether you have internet or not. Uh, those are some things we've thought about too. It's terrific. The final area I wanted to get your input on is where this is all headed next. If you think about from the perspective of someone that uses a, a go-to-market strategy that's heavily aligned with product-led growth in a customer education, customer success kind of framework for a SaaS company, what do you see going on right now where we're going to look back 24 months from now, 36 months from now, and realize that there was something huge that was set work that was fundamentally changing the whole challenge and the opportunity around this? So I think, particularly when it comes to customer education or in SaaS, simulation and the ability to learn by doing what you're learning is a much more uh, comprehensive way to learn anything, any skill, right? If we can take you from watching videos about flying a plane to virtual reality simulation of actually flying a plane, those are extremely different learning experiences and one will have a much deeper connection uh, and, and re retention of that skill. So like I was saying earlier, because we have HubSpot attached to HubSpot Academy, I really wanna like lean into that and uh, bring people into the software, have them do stuff there and then assess their skills in the software rather than teach, show them videos and have them uh, you know, just kind of retain videos and you do a multiple choice quiz. For instance, we had like last, April, when we were at this like peak of the pandemic, we had something like we awarded 40,000 certifications and each certification takes 30 minutes to pass that exam on average. Like obviously there's a big variance, but on average the 30 minutes. And I did the math and I was like, we just took two years and two and a quarter years worth of humanity's time to have them go take multiple choice questions. There's got to be a better way to assess their skills, you know, at the, in some programmatic automatic way. And, you know, there is, we can do that in the software and we can have people go, you know, learn something and then apply it in the software and then assess whether they learned it by what they did in the software rather than just take multiple choices. Yet. So I think that's the future of online learning, the simulation and going and applying what you're learning and, and actually doing it rather than just watching it and hearing about it. So that might be tricky to do on the treadmill, sorry to say. <laughs> Depends how much you can get done on the, uh, <laughs> being, able, being able to pinch and zoom around, but yeah, it's... Very interesting to hear a greater emphasis coming on application and being able to implement and greater retention around that. Right. That's terrific. Eric, if anyone has any questions on anything you talked about in today's episode or wants to reach out and, and connect with you, what's the best way to reach you? Is LinkedIn the best channel? Uh, LinkedIn is great or Twitter. Uh, I'm Eric Peter Zero on Twitter. Uh, both are great. What's a good first place for someone to start that's brand new to, that's never heard of HubSpot Academy before? Do you have a favorite first course that you'd send them to? I always recommend the inbound certification. It was the first one for a reason, and it sets the stage for everything else. So, 
It's terrific. So I'll make sure to include a link to that as well. Eric, thanks so much for joining me today. It's been super informative to hear from the perspective of what goes on behind the scenes and scaling and, and growing HubSpot Academy and the way you've been able to use it as a growth engine for uh, feeding HubSpot's bigger picture goals. Absolutely. Happy to join. And thanks so much for having me. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for listening to this episode of the B2B Digitized Podcast. To subscribe and leave a review, check us out at b2bdigitize.com or wherever you like to consume podcast episodes, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube.